Hey guys, I'm Daryl and welcome to this edition of our off-road camper build. Starting to get to the pointy end now and it's really interesting. Um, with this COVID stuff, I've had to go out and quickly buy a few of the high priced items because if I didn't, um, and the awning especially, I just could, was getting to the point where I couldn't get my hands on them and they're saying, oh, October sometime, but they really didn't know. Um, and they're in a state of Australia, the, the awning manufacturer, that are locked down at the moment. So it's, yeah, it's been an expensive couple of weeks, but I had to buy the stuff anyway, and over the next week or two, everything will be here. Today, we're gonna to look at the battery system um, and the charge system, where we're gonna put the battery, what battery I've bought, uh, the BC DC charger, where we're mounting that, wiring, and basically getting it all working. Uh, there'll be further things I'll add as I go. However, this will be a fairly final uh, fit of the electrical system. I bought a Renogy 100 amp lithium battery. There's a whole heap of these things out there and it gets so confusing when you start looking at them. And there's some that are hundreds of dollars cheaper than this and there's some that are hundreds of dollars more expensive than this. The cheaper ones, I think you need to look at the discharge and charge rates of them. Um, the more expensive ones, you start to get into Bluetooth apps that look at how the battery's being charged and everything. I kind of got to the point with that where I thought, I can buy the Bluetooth apps as a third party, like Renogy sells uh, a Bluetooth thing that you just bolt to the battery. So I just figured, nah, probably don't need that because it was like three or $400 more. This battery was on sale. Um, they've brought it down to just under 800 Australian delivered. Um, however, I don't know a lot about these things. So I've put a bit of focus on guys that do. And there's a guy on YouTube called Will Pros. And I'll link to it down below. He pulls these batteries apart. He looks at the circuit boards. He looks at the quality of all the components um, and, and gives a review on what the guts of these batteries are. And he's given the Renogy one a really good wrap up. So as I said, I'll link to that down below. That sort of made my mind up. It was like, oh, this is a good quality battery. I'll buy this. So this has got a maximum discharge rate of 100 amps and a maximum charge rate of 50. Um, so it looks like a fairly good battery. And why I didn't get AGM, wait. This is probably a third of what an AGM battery would weigh. This is about 12 kilos. So that's what we're doing with that. The next two items are a bit of a yin and yang thing. I ended up buying a really good quality Red Arc, BCDC 1225D, um, BCDC charger. These are top end of the business. They just work apparently. I've never had one before, but everyone you talk to says you just install them, they work, and you don't have to worry about it. I've mounted the BCDC charger onto a King's electrical panel box. Which, for those that don't know, King's in Australia are the Walmart of four-wheel drive accessories. Um, the stuff's okay, it's really cheap, um, it may not last that long. <laughs> But a lot of guys buy it because it's cheap and it gets them out there. And, and that's not a bad thing. However, if you look through their range, there's some items that aren't too bad. And I think this is one of those items. Now we're setting up this BC DC charger. Basically what you do is you've got your inputs. So in this instance with this one, you've got your solar panel input and your motor vehicle input. And that'll just go to the motor vehicle battery via a uh, Anderson plug at the back of the vehicle. They go into the BC DC charger. The BC DC charger, the Red Arc One, prefers solar energy over the vehicle, and if it can grab solar energy at will, you've got a ground, and then you've got your output. So your output goes to your camper battery, and from your camper battery, you feed out to your foods. It's a fairly simple thing to wire up once you get your head around it. So what I've done with this, and why I wanted it was it gives me a mount for the BC-DC charger. Um, I've got a solar Anderson plug in, I've got the motor vehicle plug in, to, and originally these were outputs, 
um, but I've got, now I've got those as inputs. I've added another Anderson plug. That's our output for the camper. Um, and we, you've already seen the wiring at the back of the camper. So that goes to there. I've put in a two prong fridge USB. So I've added, taken out the original and added that. Um, I don't have any of these wired. Um, however, these food through the fuse block. I've added a resettable fuse for the output. Um, and inside I've got another fuse for the input. With this you also get your negative bus bar and you get a couple of um, connections. I haven't added anything to the inside of this. What I've got, however, put of this, is I've got a negative to go to the battery, I've got the output from the BC DC charger that goes to the positive of the battery, and I've also got the input. Um, for the battery foods and that goes to the positive of the battery. So what we need to do is mount this in the camper, connect both of these up to the positive on the battery, that up to the negative. I'll run a ground from the negative to the chassis of the camper, um, plug in our the Jeep's food, plug in the solar food, plug in the output to the back of the camper for all the 12 volt stuff and we're good to go. Um, oh, and this one here we can plug the fridge into. I'll probably also put a light in the fridge box because this is where this will live. Um, and I'll use one of the switches here to run that off. I've also added an LED here. And that shows you when the um, battery's charging. So I think this is a really good outcome. Everything's just click in with this. So all I've got to do is mount it in the fridge box of the camper, mount the battery underneath it, and um, connect it all up and we're good to go. So let's get it all mounted in the camper and I'll show you what I've done in the fridge box so far. So what I've done in this fridge box is I've got some corner brackets and I've mounted those to all the corners and that strengthens up the box. The box is so solid it's not funny um, and I've also added a piece of ply because I want to screw into the side of this with the um, electrical box. All of the electrical foods come up here, the battery sits on this, um, I'll put a bit of aluminium angle here and that'll stop the battery from coming out. Um, I'll put a hook here and here and just put a strap over the battery and that'll hold it down. It's fairly tight, but that's not a bad thing. So let's get all this fitted. So I've got the box all mounted up now and I've just mounted it with a piece of aluminium angle to the back of it. Um, this side, I'm going to put a piece of um, this ply in and I'll use some aluminium angle there. I thought I would be able to um, put a, a big angle piece on to this, but it's just too far away. So it's just easier to put a um, piece of aluminium angle there. Now the battery turns up in storage mode and to get it out of that, you open this up, there's an up and a link port. You put the supplied switch into the up port. As you can see, it's just glowing faint. If I press that switch down, it's now glowing strongly. So the battery's now live. And if you want to store this battery, you just press this again and it'll go into storage mode because of the BMS in the battery. So I'll just connect up these and um, we'll see what it looks like. So we can see now that the battery is looking at 13.4 volts voltage, so that's fully charged. Um, this is all now, now live. The camper is live. We go to here, we can see we've got 13.3 volts here, and the lights and everything are working. So the camper lives.
Now before I wrap up, um, the solar panels needed to be unregulated for this BC DC charger too. So the regulators off those and that just wires directly to here. It appears to be all working at the moment but time will tell. Um, although we could see what the solar panels were, were bringing in on that um, voltmeter before we connected the battery up. Um, with this battery if I need more power I can piggyback off this. Um, I'd probably have to put a battery underneath the floor of the camper. Um, but that's doable. Um, total cost, it's probably cost me around the $1,400 mark, $1,400, $1,500, no, it's probably about $1,500 for all of this, which, which isn't a bad thing. Um, the cables are pretty exy, um, these big thick cables, um, so it may be $1,600 for the whole lot, but even still, it's not a bad system, but you can see how the, the dollars start to climb with these campers once you add in the nice bits, and they're not just a box that you sleep in. Um, but we all want something different. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.